All right, it's me here. Let me talk to you a little bit about some progress I made with an inventory app. So if you haven't been watching any of my follow-ups so far, basically the premise is I want everything in-app. I want in-app items, in-app currency, in-app tracking, in-app inventory, all those things. Um, but trying to find a good way to make that logistically possible with Ingli was proving difficult until last night. Um, it's still laggy. I can't do anything about that just because Google Sheets itself is a bit laggy, but uh, it's functional. So let me show you kind of what I did. So first off here, uh, you'll notice that I have um, an inventory uh, sheet. This is uh, by user, and um, user can come in and also edit their own profile and so forth, and they have the ability to uh, see their inventory. Uh, this five slots left uh, is a total of nine slots, so they have nine available um, slots to fill as with items. And within each item, uh, they have the ability to drop an item if it's not a consumable. And if it is a consumable item, like a pen or something, then they have the ability to, or pencil, yeah, they have the ability to use the item as well. And in either case, it'll drop that item from their inventory. So if I use the pencil, then you'll see the pencil is no longer in my inventory, right? And if I get a better shield and I wanna drop the shield, again, it'll be dropped from my inventory. And then you see my inventory slots will be back. Let's see, uh, did save, okay. Um, next up is we have the actual shop itself. So here are the different items. This is just a list in a spreadsheet here. Uh, that's this guy here, so the shop items. And on this page, I have uh, how many items are total and how many items are remaining, and then whether or not it's a consumable, that kind of thing. And then on this screen, they have the ability to then buy the item. I also have who the current owners of the item are, again, how much is it remaining, uh, the cost of the item, and whether or not they own this item. Uh, I also have it available so if they don't have enough funds to purchase the item, then they won't be able to. And this was the sticky point, trying to get it so that Glide could recognize whether or not a user had enough funds, which is located in one sheet, and compare that to uh, the user data of this sheet when there's only, um, and for, for each item for each user. So a whole matrix kind of set up. And so I knew that I needed to have a matrix. I didn't know how to create the mat matrix, but I did know how to create a pivot table. And that's where uh, that came in. So really to make this work, the owners was pretty easy, uh, but to make the wor it work so that they couldn't buy the item if they didn't have enough funds. What I had to do is first create whether or not the item is affordable for every user. So using some spreadsheet trickery, whenever I add a new item or if a new user gets added, this main kind of list uh, gets updated with uh, somebody new will get added to the list. And if I add a new item, um, that specific item will also get added to the list. So right now I have five items. And so here's the five items for this one particular user, and that repeats for each user. So it is kind of row intensive, but luckily, uh, since this screen is not being displayed in the app, it doesn't count against my rows, right? All right, so just so, so proof of concept here, um, let's go add a new item to my list here. I'm gonna add a sixth item. Uh, let's call it uh, paper, because I can't think of anything better at the moment. Uh, something you write on. And uh, let's make it worth two gold. Let's have a thousand sheets of paper available. And it is consumable. And then I need an image for some paper. All right, so now if I go back to this all items affordable, I should now see that I have six items. Right? And now I see that those six items repeat for those six users. Okay, so this formula um, here <laughs> was the one that I had to actually look up and kind of mess around with so that I could match up every single user to every single item. And now it's just checking the, whether their balance is uh, greater than or equal to the cost of this particular item, which is that VLOOKUP. So I had this really long array, and this is going to get long extremely long the more items that get added and the more users that get added and so there's going to be pretty intensive workload in the back but whatever then from this i created a pivot table 
which basically just filters out the users to whom it's affordable. So if it's not affordable, then this list will not display those email addresses. And that plays a huge part because I was able to do quite a bit of trickery before with figuring out whether or not the balance was available. But I had to get the end result to be an email address because that's how Glide wants it in order to hide or filter something out by the signed in user is the email address, right? So pivot table was the way to go. So here is every single item that's affordable for these users. All right, so then once I had this information, then in my Glide app, I had to create some relations. And so to do that, I went and I wanted, and I wanted those relations to be uh, in the item store, right? Because I want this button in the item store to either be hidden or be visible based on whether or not it's affordable. So I want this button to look for this data. So I had to create a relation by the item, right, for the users to whom it's affordable. So that's what I did uh, in data. I came over here and let's see. So under the item store, shop items, I created the affordable relation. So basically it's just a relating that, uh, yes, that the items in this sheet relates to the items in my shop items sheet. And there are multiple of them, right? I only have six items, but I have multiple versions of those items for each person in whom it's affordable here. And then I did an affordable lookup. So now it's just looking up this information and spitting back the email addresses to whom it's affordable. And all of this is occurring in my items, my shop items sheet, which is what's so uh, so important, is that in my shop items sheet, I can see the user addresses, the email addresses to whom it's affordable. And then from there, then um, Glide will take care of the rest of the work about visibility. So now I have this buy item, right? Uh, I go to my layout. Here's my buy item button, right? And it is. Uh, visible only when the afford lookup tab is the signed in user. And even though there is more than one signed in user in this column, right, here's all the affordable items for a pencil, right, so it's basically spitting back all of this information. So even though there's more than one email address here, it'll recognize that, let's say, my signed in user is part of that list and will, the visibility will be affected. All right, so let's put this into practice here. So for all intents and purposes, once I buy some items, I should no longer see this buy item available, all right? All right, so the most expensive thing in here is armor. My current balance is 39, so once I buy two of them, I should no longer see that it's available to me, all right? So I'm gonna go ahead and buy some armor. Okay, let's do that again. Item, submit, and back. So it is, there is some lag. Let's count the lag. All right, one, two, three, four, five, six. It sees that it, I own the item. Seven, eight, eight seconds. All right, so right around 10 seconds or so, um, this will change. So again, it's because of all the formulas I have running in my spreadsheet, it's going to take some time. Uh, but it's recognized whether I own the item, it, own, it recognizes whether or not there's enough funds, and since I don't have any more funds, I can't buy the item anymore. Um, and it shows who the current owners of, or, or, are of the item, kind of gamify it some more, right? Kind of just a status symbol, right? Now, here's the one flaw in the app. Because of the lag, users can spam that buy button and go into the negatives. Uh, even though the, the coding and the logistics say otherwise, Glide can't keep up with the formulas, and so uh, they have that uh, fault. So I have nine gold. So technically, I shouldn't be able to buy two pencils because each are five gold. But if I go in here and pencil and buy the item, and before Glide can recognize it, if I come in here and buy, I can buy a second item, submit. I can buy a third item and submit. And now finally, it says I don't have enough funds. <laughs> And so if I go back here to my inventory, I should, I should say that I'm in the negatives now, right? And I am, unfortunately. So I need to find some way to 
slow down the buying process or speed up the computation. Um, but that's where I'm at at the moment. It works. It's functional at least. So uh, I'd love to have some pointers if you know of a better way to get this more computational. Uh, so that speeds up a bit. Awesome. Um, if you can figure out a way to slow down the buying process for me, awesome. Uh, my initial thought was coming in and uh, setting up a rich text that's just really long. It says you need to scroll all the way down to the bottom in order to see the confirm. And just make it super, super, super duper long. That they have to like, take 10 seconds or so to kind of scroll through the shop item. And then finally at the bottom there's a required checkbox that they have to check before they're allowed to submit for that. I don't know. Something stupid. Um, but if you want to know a better way, please let me know. Uh, if you have any more ideas or if you want to see any more feature requests for this, please let me know as well and I'll be happy to work those in. All right. Hope this video was instructive. If you have any more questions, just let me know and uh, I'll see you later.